Renato, welcome to the Better Project podcast. And we're just speaking off air before. The reason why I wanted to get you on, first you reached out to me. Why were you so interested to jump on this podcast? I was interested because I think you, you've you been doing something different. And uh, usually when I when I go to a podcast, it's mainly based on what I've achieved in, in a term of like results and, uh, and, and things like that. But I feel your podcast is based... Uh, on a huge part, uh, I think makes a fighter and makes uh, like a competitor in our game, which is like the mental aspect, mental health, and like uh, all of this area, which uh, probably I didn't have the chance to to talk much. And I feel is a huge, uh, 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 more important, and I think can help a lot of people out there. Mm. You know, my experience. I'll just get you to move this yes. like that. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So the. When I when you reached out to me and I was looking through your content, I was like, what am I going to speak to this guy about, right? Because the big majority of your content is around the fighting yes, and the technical aspect of it all and the skill set. And I thought about it, I'm like, why I'm going to speak to this guy is because I want to know who he is on a human level, his journey and the psychological side of things what makes you the coach that you are today yeah. but before we dive into that to give a bit of context what does myself what does the audience need to know about you to better understand the man that sits in front of us today i think uh, uh understand how important it's uh, in the journey of life uh, to to have the daily victory to be a better person in yourself because we're all thinking about uh, the future like something um you know, I want to achieve that. I want to 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 go there. I want to to do these things in life. But um, what makes this big victory is like your daily uh, wins. You know, uh, a lot of people are struggling with their inner self, and they have like those demons, which uh, you know, um, uh, th- th- they're all those things uh, which uh, uh, brings you brings you down in life. You don't don't let you progress and. And uh, as a man, as a as a woman, like you have to find the tools to defeat uh, daily those demons. It's gonna be always inside you. Like uh, in, in the in the Japanese culture, like they say, you have the yin and the yang. You know, it's like a circle. And uh, what is good is always a bad. And and you need to find uh, that balance to progress in your life. For you, what were those those demons? Were they did they stem from your upbringing? Yeah, so I had like a very, very rough upbringing. Um, my my family is uh, originally from Bosnia, Herzegovina, but the Serbian part of Bosnia. So it was a very complicated time because Bosnia is divided basically in in, in um, three uh, ethnicities. So you have like uh, the, the Serbian part, the Bosnian part, and, and uh, the Catholic part, which is like... Uh, uh, to the sides closest to Croatia, etc. So for me, it was very complicated because uh, uh, my parents are very open-minded f- and and very um, for them like everyone is like equal, etc. But uh, when the war uh, in ex-Yugoslavia broke down, it was like this huge uh, separation of uh, culture, which uh, I never uh, felt like. Uh, uh, you know how people are strongly like. Uh, National nationalism, you know, yep. they they're uh, identify like in one culture. I was uh, always um, uh, uh, for me, everyone was equal, and I didn't see differences. But and and that's thanks to my parents for them too, you know. Uh, for me, uh, that was hard because uh, I didn't spend much time with my parents. Not because they didn't want to spend time with me, but uh, being immigrant at the start and, and moving to Italy. So f- before they moved in Slovenia where I was born and we lo- lived uh, in in this tiny apartment, uh, housing commission was 40 meters square. And with all the blocks, I know uh, here too, people are living in house commission, but the condition there was very, very bad, uh, very poor. So we had like one toilet shared with all the block. So in the morning you wake up and you line up to go to the toilet. Really? And uh, was very um very rough i remember probably uh, that's that's my first memory and uh, probably i never shared it before i remember like growing up uh, um 
having a lot of limitation uh, on the economical level and and everything so my parents they've been always like hustling always working and uh, my first memory i had i have an older brother and uh, we are very close and it was interesting because um, uh, i i said that before i became a man of the house uh, even before i was a man you know so i have to uh you become what people need you to be also and um, i was probably the more mature and the more even if he was the older i was the older if this makes sense so but when you when you're when you're like five six years old um the difference is huge one if you are one year and a half apart you know in the in the those years you can see it a lot it's not like you're 30 and and the other guy is like uh, the other brother is 29 when you're young like those differences are huge and i remember uh, my was christmas and my brother was uh, he really wanted this car no and uh, my parents they always did their best to to make us happy and uh, he really wanted he was passionate about cars so he wanted this car this toy car no and um, i was looking my brother really wanted and my mom clearly made like a statement saying like if i get you this car like i cannot get uh, uh get you guys both something that's valuable like we we need to find we need to decide no and for me i never find happiness on having things uh, i was so happy on on see other people happy so uh i was like no i don't want anything i wanted many things you know you're a kid you want toys yeah. you want this you want that but for me like just imagine seeing my brother happy to uh, to get this car I was like, that was enough for me. So I say to my mom, like, I don't want nothing. Like, uh, and my mom could not afford that car, which my uh, brother wanted. So she ended up getting a somewhat cheaper one. But uh, I remember when, when we uh, unpacked the presents and I got, I got nothing because I didn't care. But when I saw my brother, like opening that and like be so happy, I was oh, like, uh, what's better joy than have the ability to make someone happy? It's insane. When you are, you have the power to make someone happy. And that's what I love about coaching. It's, uh, it's insane. And I remember that day because my brother was so happy. He was like showing this car and like he was playing with this car. And I was like, I was so happy. Like, and I, it wasn't even my car. And uh, as a kid, I remember my first memory. I always believe in justice. You know? I always believe it's so weird because like when you grow up, you understand especially how I grew up, uh, justice is very, <laughs> it's not, it's not there, you know, like you, you but I was, uh, I was strongly believed like at the end is justice, no? So he is um, having this car and we went down to the, we was this blocks, you know, and was this park uh, between the housing commission and we, we go down to the park and we play and all the kids like, I see him with this car and, and, when you grow up on those contests, is a lot of jealousy com because it comes from people who have nothing. So my brother was playing this car and the, uh, these other kids, which was a bit older, came to my my brother and uh, he stole his car. No? And I'm like looking, my brother like is it's crying, is like upset and everything. And these kids is stole his car. And I'm like, that's not justice. So I went up to the kids and I got the car back. And uh, we went to an authentication. I punched the kids in 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 uh, in his nose, and uh, I got the car and ran away. And um, that's something that day is very memorable memorable for me because I understood a lot of things. So I went. Ho we went home. My my brother got the car back, and as I said, like he was the older, but I was the older. Mm. And uh, we went home, and at some point, like I heard on the door, someone is is uh, knocking on the door. And was the dad with the kids, no? And the kids is like with the bleed nose. And uh, his dad is like uh, oh, uh, screaming at my father. My father was like such a hard working man and he never wanted trouble. And he was like, uh, in, it was very embarrassing for someone to come at the door. And, and this dad is screaming and saying like, oh, your your son and punched my kids for no reason, etc." And uh, my, my dad turned around to my brother because he was already bigger and said like, why did you do that? Like, uh, uh, you you cannot do that. Like, uh, and it's screaming at my brother. And the other kids is saying like, no, it's not the big one, it's the small one, you know? And like, they all turned around to me and said like, really? Like, and I was so much smaller than the other kid. 
and uh, my dad uh, lost lost it at me uh and uh, and i'm looking at my brother and my brother was so scared of my dad uh for for some reasons and um and uh, I, I i don't like to to go because like i my my dad is a very uh, strong man you know and he changed a lot he's a very good person now and uh, it's interesting because um when you grow you understand a lot of things you understand what what he have been through and he's insane so probably what i if i've been experienced what he have experienced i will have been crazy in this moment so after uh the guy left and uh, my dad didn't even ask me what happened no uh he didn't uh, know the kids stole the car from my brother and that's all what's happening and uh that day he beat the shit out of me you know <laughs> and uh my brother was that scared and he didn't say nothing and i just remember like uh, i understood a lot these days i, I remember i cop uh, uh 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 the beating you know and uh, i didn't say nothing about my brother I didn't say nothing about the kid i didn't say nothing about what actually happened i just took it no and this was like uh uh a huge lesson for me because i understood like justice yeah i believe in justice but it's a very hard things to obtain mm -hmm. especially if you if you choose one path and be a sort of type of man you're gonna need to face those those uh, reality in life and you're gonna it's gonna be hard you know wow and from that story it just goes to show the the characteristics you have of having that that empathy and going after the justice and doing what's what's right yeah but also not being afraid you're just like fuck yeah. it i'm just gonna go after it and if i believe this is right i'm gonna go after it was that your first kind of altercation as a kid yes did do you feel like that kind of sparked you down the path of going into fighting or was there mm. someone else that was a role model for you so i um i'm an i'm not a violent person at all mm. no but uh, I was very good at, you know, you, you sort of cannot choose your talents. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I didn't like violence. I didn't like uh, the fact of, uh, of the violence, probably because I, I grew up into violence. Mm. So for me, it was like normal. And uh, I was a, a very, I can say awkward kid. So I was like uh, very mature and smart for my age because I have to. I, like I never had the parents at home. I never had uh, like um, uh, support. My parents was always working to better my life. That's why, in today with my life experience, I'm 32. I understand that. Like it's not an excuse, you know, to experience. Like you should never experience, for example, the things I have experienced. But uh, also, I have my book is you know when you start your life, you have like all fresh pages, and after you develop so much knowledge and understand what my dad been through my parents and uh, you know as you say um uh, uh in regardless like um the dedication and my first experience i feel uh, uh that sort of uh, made me understand that if you want uh, things uh, that's where i'm having success now as a person and as a coach is like i don't accept uh, um I don't accept, uh, uh, like a lot of people, leaders these days, they don't uh, step uh, up uh, on what they believe. Like there's not many people who say like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it. No, if I say something where I'm from, uh, it's very, my word means everything, it means more than uh, money, m means more than achievement. If I g tell you my word, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it. And that's a big problem also, mm. you know, because uh, um, not, many people doing that so for me where i'm from like if i say something uh, i have to i have to like it's not i'm gonna die and i'm gonna respect what i'm saying and that's got me far got me far even growing up from the contest i grew up you know because as i told you i have to be a man before i was even a man i was a kid so my parents was always away and now your parents look how interesting is this part you know your parents are away because they try to give you a better life, right? Mm. So they're always working and you grew up alone. But now 
the big part of like being a father and be uh, um, it's give the time to your kids to to be sort of of a filter in life for them and not experience some sort of things but when I my parents are away because they're trying to give me a better life but I grew up alone and now I don't have those filters in life and I grew up like in a very rough place which uh, I should have all uh, like you have three ways to exit from where I'm from or you study and you study hard or you are good in the sport or you become a criminal so that's the three ways you can you can progress in in where I'm from it's not like other ways you know and uh, you know violence was so natural for me so I would like walk down the, the the house I was living and violence was something normal I would see like people um, fights was like something well, I will fight I will I will be fighting every day you know fighting for small things what are you looking at me what are, what are you looking at me and this was a fight so um, growing up um, I grew up on those contests so for me it was normal now when I have the knowledge of life and I go back and I say like that's not normal you know you, you cannot uh, live like that but um, mm -hmm. this has built me like sort of like a very thick skin and it's very hard for me to 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 be surprised you no know, on things and that's why I can I can be calm in a situation where most of the people are losing control mm -hmm. and uh, so even like growing up on this contest uh, the wrong people will respect me highly because I wouldn't compromise myself they would say look these kids I'll leave him alone he's like uh, training hard to to become successful in his sport he he's running like at 5 6 a.m he's uh, not going out he's not uh, 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 doing stupid things because he um, he's uh, even like good and bad people respect you when you're extremely dedicated on something and you're not compromising yourself so this is a big uh, life school for me you know uh, being able to stay strong on my identity not compromising myself and not end up like uh, how most of my friends and people around me have end up, you know, like in in uh, in situation when or they're not alive today or they're stuck uh, um, in in a lifestyle which uh, they're never gonna get out, you know. Mm. I respect that because, as you said, people who go through those tough upbringings go down one or two paths. They try and get out of it, or they just continue going down it and jail, death, crime, yes. all that kind of thing. Yes. And the way I see it is the ultimate rebellion is personal excellence. Yes. So yes. for you, you went down that path of personal excellence. Yes. But you mentioned you would kind of seek out these fights, right? These competitions or you'd walk the street and, hey, you look at me funny. Like, yeah. Let's have a fight. Were you an angry kid? So I, I, I was like a very positive kid, but uh, I was very smart for my age. So... I I was very weird in a sense like for example if I see an homeless person I was kids I will like go home and I will feel very bad for what I have so I will I will empathize so much on the things I've seen so like for me I wasn't like seeking for someone to look me bad and like fight for me like where I where I grew up was like people will try to put on you uh, and okay. I won't like accept that I wouldn't accept bullies and I wouldn't accept uh, someone tried to uh, intimidate me so that's why for example even now I don't uh, ever go out I never use drugs in my life I don't drink I don't smoke I don't uh, I stay out of any sort of contest like that because that's a big part of like uh, um, being a better version of yourself is like recognizing what's dangerous for you and like not associate at all uh, yourself so for me was that kids who had that fight for that car like i didn't accept like if someone does something wrong i wouldn't turn my back like i always say to myself like if i have to die all the arrow have to hit me on the front i don't want any arrow on my back and mm -hmm. that was like my problem also because like I, when you live like that like at some point like 
everyone knew me, you know. And uh, when I was getting great result in my in my in my sport, people respect you and leave you alone. You you build that status, you know. But uh, was um, was uh, is is a very hard path to choose uh, to to know your identity and stick with that, you know, and not compromising yourself because it's so easy. You just say yes once and you. Mm. you become less uh, strong on your identity you say yes one more time and you just without you knowing in a couple of months years you're completely on the wrong path you know so that's where it's very important to understand uh, your opportunity to to be better what you have in your hands to get better your books your study your sport or or a relationship or friendship you know when you you want to say like you are who you you hang with you know i love my friends and i love them to that still now but uh, i knew it and i understood as a kid i could not stay with them because if i would stay with them i will never have them in the future so i tried to become an excellence of what i was doing that's why very very young age i opened i tell you this story it's a funny story um i opened this project called martial arts for integration so I opened it because I really wanted to help my friends. So my goal was that I wanted to give my friends an opportunity. So I started training them in this park. And after three, four, ye- uh, three, uh, uh, three, four days, like I had like four guys, three, four days after I have like 20 guys. And at the end of the summer, I have hundreds of, of kids and uh, older than me, young men training uh, MMA with me to, to get better. Because as I said to you before, MMA is a very positive addiction. So these guys, if they want to be a fighter, they need uh, to to training three times a day, eat properly, go sleep. They cannot smoke, they cannot drink. So their cardio is not going to be there. So automatically they structure their life and they become uh, like very uh, functioning member of society without knowing like more time they spend doing this, more they become very structured and balanced people in life. And um, everything started, I was doing boxing, you know, I was 13, uh, 14 years old. And my best friend, Simone, uh, he was, uh, he was uh, 13, was one year younger than me. And uh, I went to pick him up at his house. And uh, this was like constantly things I've, I've, I've seen and I was struggle with, you know. He comes, uh, he was playing soccer. Uh, I ring him at the door and he comes out and he's all bruised up, you know. Um, his dad was drinking and uh, was an alcoholic and he beat him up badly and I'd say to him like Simon let's go for a walk like let's like and I was suffering so much but I didn't even experience that that's what what was weird about me that's why I became successful as a coach because I empathize a lot on the situation or where they live and uh, we went for a walk but my friend is walking in an area which we know we shouldn't go there you know so we walk on the wrong uh, area and uh, we cross where we are from we're going in this other area and i know if we go there it's gonna be trouble no and uh, when we walking was these guys which was mainly like that this area was people from naples so they look at my friend and they start making fun of his bruises like they think someone beat him up they don't know his dad is morning his dad was drunk and beat him up as a breakfast you know was v- the, was very um very hard to see that you know but they think like he just had a fight maybe you know so they started making fun of him and those guys are all like 20 uh, 18 and when you are 13 14 and someone is 20 is a huge difference right so my friend uh, turns and goes right in the middle of this uh, group of people which was like seven eight of them ten of them and uh, he his was a salpo he punched this guy right in the head he was like 13 he knocks the guy and he falls down because like he didn't have like any technique, but he was very genetically gifted. And I knew it. Like when he did that, now I'm with him. I have to do it too. So I jumped in and like we had a, a massive fight and we are kids and there are like seven, eight of them and we're doing pretty well, uh, but they basically bashing us and we, we, we fight him back. And it was this guy who stepped in so we are 13 14 they're like 18 20 and this guy come in 
he's like 35. Carmine was his name. That's a very funny story because Carmine, so I'm 14. At 18, I opened my project, Martial Arts for Integration. And Carmine, he uh, came uh, to my to, to the park to change his life because Carmine was, everyone was scared about him because he was 35 and he was like 10 years in jail. He just got out and everyone was like, he had a tattoo in his face. Everyone was like, oh, like this guy's dangerous. So he stepped in and say like, oh, these two kids have more balls than you guys. Uh, like uh, uh, they're in two, you are in seven, eight and uh, you cannot even do anything to them. Like, and they have more balls than you. And like the fight stopped because he interfered and everyone was scared of it. He was like that age gap and that life experience, which like people are like, oh, we're not playing with that. And I'm, I turned around to my best friend and I said like, man, like you're gifted. You can be a very good fighter, you know? And he's like, no, my dad wants to do, wants me to do soccer. And I'm like, man, like come to my boxing gym. I take you there and, uh, and, um, uh, you can do very well in the sport, no? So I took him to the boxing gym. I spoke to my coach at the time and I said, coach, this is my friend. He's very good. You know, I was doing very well in the sport already uh, between all the disciplines. And I have to go away for a competition in South Italy. I'm from the North Italy. And uh, I left my friend in the gym before it wasn't like now, phones, etc. I left and uh, when I come back in one week, I'm going to check it out on it. So I came back, I went to the gym and I said to my coach, How's my friend doing? How's Simone doing? How say? Oh, he came only with you that day. He never came back. No, and I'm like, oh, like, why? No, and I'm thinking because in Italy you pay the membership fee, uh, six months or one year, and my friend myself we didn't have any money, you know. So I'm like, that's the justice things I was telling you. I'm like, so he didn't come because I know my friends. That's what's sometimes wrong on the generation now. They don't have, they, they play like they don't have nothing, but where I'm from, if you don't have nothing, you're embarrassed to say you don't have nothing, you know what I mean? Mm. And my friend didn't have the money to pay the membership, so he loved boxing, but he decided to not go because he know he couldn't afford, you know? He was wouldn't go in there begging for a free membership or mm. things like that. So I left the gym and I'm like, so pissed off because my friend you know justice what i was telling you my friend cannot train him because he doesn't have money to train and i'm like i have to do something about it like that's that's not right that's not justice and look how crazy is that i'm walking to my city and i'm pissed off i'm thinking about my friend i have to do something what i could do like i'm thinking i'm i'm trying to to find a way i'm walking and i step on something when I step, I look under my shoes and it's like a huge gold necklace. I find it on the ground. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, how, what's the odds of me walking, stepping down a gold chain? I call one of my older friends, older boys, and I say, he was 18, say, come with me. Uh, we're gonna sell this gold necklace. I give you a bit of money. And uh, when I sold this gold necklace, I went to my coach uh, at the time and I said to him, coach, that's the membership for one year for my best friend. But uh, don't tell him uh, I pay it for you. Uh, tell him you sponsor him whenever because I knew how proud is my friend. He will never accept me for pay, paying for his membership. And uh, now I'm 32. I was 14. My best friend, probably if you want to watch this podcast, he still, I never told him I pay for his membership. So that's what I always have done, you know. He became the Italian champion. Now he's 8-0 pro. Yeah, wow. Still today, he doesn't know I pay his first membership for his first year with that gold necklace. And that's how I, I always lived, you know. Like I never did things so people can can know what, I'm, what I did, you know, to show off. I just wanted to help others. That's why as a coach, I'm, I'm doing well, not... As I told you, every coach should have technical and tactical uh, skills. But on the human level, that's what makes you different. Cas D'Amato, Teddy Adlet, you know, all of these great coaches, they have something different than just teaching skills or how to land the jab. Everyone on the highest level, you come from rugby league, every coach on, on the highest class should have that. It's a requirement. 
but what do you have aside that which makes you a different level coach and that's where i focus on my study uh, philosophy psychology history religion all of these things all this knowledge gives you access to people how i can coach someone to a life and that situation how he can trust me if i don't have knowledge of him we're going to war together it's uh, fighting is like it's not tomorrow so we're gonna die to that battlefield or we win or we die uh, that's what's mma about is like an ultimate uh, ultimate fighting so the concept is who is the best fighter and usually if that was like on the roman time in the Colosseum, the loser will have have only one choice and which is the death so that's how you have to approach fighting that's why it's very strong that's why i told you fighters are people who have something less not something more you know they look up to fighters they look at you was talking about your dad uh before we started the conversation and and um, a fighter is a fighter because they have something less not something more people they see them winning the belt say i want to be like him no you don't want to be like him like uh, you want uh, uh, to all all mainly 80 percent it's not everyone okay it's like i like to bring number and statistics 80 percent 70 percent are people who come from a situation where not only poverty or things like that doesn't poverty doesn't really relate to that inside instability you know you can have everything these kids who have everything in life they have money they have everything and they don't feel good inside you know it's many factors but as you spoke about your your dad like it's um you, you didn't need to fight no he was pushing you to fight except you didn't need it because like you was on a different stage of your persona okay which uh, uh, you didn't need that uh, it's almost like insecurity people had and that's why they fight and uh, it's interesting because they look them like normal people look up the fighters and say like they're like gods you know look how strong he is look how fast look what he can do you know but the reality is they have something less you know they have those demons we was talking about mm -hmm. and uh, through fighting you try to fight those demons so they don't get to you you know yeah and that's why i love having these conversations especially with fighters because as you said people look up to them right but until you listen to a conversation of their story and what they've gone through a lot of people are going to sit back and be like oh no i don't wish that upon me i exactly. wish i didn't have to go through that and for you how good of a fighter were you huh how good of a fighter were you i was uh, uh that's uh, an interesting an interesting question like no one no one asked me that you know they asked me all about coaching they don't ask me i was um probably my my talent was my work ethic mm -hmm. so i was working harder than anyone i remember like for me it was a must like every holiday every uh break i can be like new year christmas my birthday for me was a must i'm gonna training harder those days because i wanted to do something which other people didn't do it i was a very my my probably stronger talent was my work ethic and my fighting iq i i would i had a blessing to not being talented genetically like not like super strong or super fast or like and that uh, limitation i needed to feed other part of me in being a fighter which was my iq mm. and that's where i have excelled in i was um as a professional i was undefeated as amateur too um and uh, it was so much hype around me um doing very well in the sport and like to be a fighter you have to have that ego you know you probably seen that if your dad have compete and fight and uh, pretty early in my career, like I didn't, I never fought because a lot of guys are fighting because they want to prove others how good they are, you know? I never did that. I, I, I was fighting because I want to prove myself and I wanted to feel that emptiness, you know, that instability. That's what my reason, that's why I choose fighting. And it's other, you can choose other sports and not only fighting, but fighting is very strong. Like fighting, you're going to, hit that you know is you're not gonna uh, play around and you cannot blame maybe you you play soccer you pass the ball to someone and you you can blame him he can blame you no it's you <laughs> you lose you lose you win you win it's very um intimate you know as a sport like when you lose a fight especially for a man everyone is watching you and 
people lose respect to you. Yeah. It's it's sad to see that. Like uh, yeah, think about you are the strongest of your family and you lose a fight. People look at you like uh, you're not having that aura anymore. It's very very hard as a as a sport, and that's where you can see a lot of good fighters that are able to outcome their uh, law. Uh, uh, they they able to come back after a huge losses, etc. And that was my biggest talent. That was my work ethic, and I was I probably if I never start coaching, I probably you can you can speak with people like who are on top of the game and uh, I've trained with world champions um, in UFC, one championship, the best of the best. And I was up there with them. You can you can ask them and and was huge expectation of me. But when I was on the top of my, um, uh, when things all aligned, like my, my age was perfect. Uh, I had like a very good record. I had like all these things stick in the boxes. I won my last fight. My coach called me and say, man, like everyone is calling me Bellator, uh, this promotion, that promotion. They want you in Dublin. They want you in America. They want there. And I, when my coach was talking, I was so excited. I'm like, I'm not going to fight anymore. That's my last fight. And he's like, really? Like, you're not going to fight anymore? And it was a shock because like, I didn't see it coming. But I just like didn't have that ego anymore. I didn't do that for others. And at some point in my career, like a lot of people had the expectation in me. And I'm like, I'm good with myself and what I've done. I know how good I am. For me, it was like that's research. And I was getting the answer on my research. I was feeling that the things, uh, the tank was empty. And I wanted to feel other things. And when I started coaching, I was coaching and fighting at the same time. And man, the joy of like someone comes to me and is completely broken mentally, psychologically. And uh, I've been there. And he comes in and I have the tools to give him happiness and make him a better person. Man, it's nothing more powerful than the, the, the opportunity to help someone to get back in his feet, you know? Someone who has struggled, who didn't see his way out, was everything dark for him. And you have the tools, hey, you can see the light. Look how I did it. You can do it, mm. no? And after you see them, you see them having nothing and be completely broken. And you see them walking through the light, well, exit the, the doors, that the places which they will have never think they could. And you see them now strong. You see them standing straight you know, proud and happy is nothing more. That's why I'm coaching. That's like nothing of this. Uh, it's bigger than I could have win any UFC belt or, or, or championship. But these wins are so much bigger for me. And that's your driving factor to, to yes. keep going forward, to helping these athletes go down the path of personal excellence. Yes. And I'm sure from while I was doing some research, your your passion for coaching would have been tested at a lot of times. I'm, yeah. Your dad said to kind of give it up and go for a normal job because it yes. doesn't pay too much. You were running it out of an underground stadium thing with rats and stuff running through it. Yeah. What kept you just going through it? Was it helping people or was there a deeper like feeling of like, this is my purpose, this is what I need to do? And no matter what people tell me, no matter what environment I'm in, I know... If I continue putting positive energy into this, it's gonna pay off. So I I don't know how I succeed. To be honest, like I have all the odds to fail. Like as you mentioned, it's insane. I came from from that underground uh, gym under a stadium with no heat, ice on the mat, rats and things like that. I had like very small odds odds to succeed. But I think two factor play important role of my success one is my love for the game and uh, i was when i when i started uh with coaching mma i understood uh, was a big lack of knowledge in the sport uh, it, mma is a very new sport it's not like boxing has been here for hundreds of years you know um uh, all the other sports are established like it's not much you can invent on a technical aspect like in rugby 
it's not like a new move you can everything is discovered pretty much you just excel in specific things and i was one of the the first to treat mma as a unique sport i was doing that in italy in my uh, underground car park in a in a small city you know and uh, at the time they would call me crazy they say like you cannot do that you cannot without going on a technical level but was doing things which now uh that's why a lot of people they call me like the father of the modern mma mm. now everyone is doing it and i was doing that 12 14 years ago and they call me crazy now they call me genius you know? <laughs> it's insane how things change mm. and uh, it's like i seen this sport like almost like being an artist you know every i i i draw these paintings with my knowledge and uh, what I have, but uh, you can you can be Picasso, you can be Michelangelo. If nobody recognizes your art, you're gonna die without ever knowing uh, what what you what's the value you bring to the world. So I understood like um, later in the years, it's not only about achieving results and like being able to draw a beautiful piece of art, but it's also about promoting it. So how I can help other, like if I'm, a lot of uh, fighter, fighting coaches, they keep knowledge and things uh, in their in their circle, no? The point is, when you do that, how I can access, how I can someone like you have seen my video and say like, oh, I want to, that's help me, how I how I can get to know this guy, how I can, can get, uh, um, uh, he, uh, let me research like how he have get this, so, I feel uh, my love for the sport on the scientific level, I play a big role and also my love for people and uh, see them need, especially my friends have drawn me and my family a lot because I want them to do better in life. So those two factors, because if you have one and you don't have the other, you cannot really excel as you were saying, you know, so I had like these two things meeting each other and uh, have helped me to, to these two motivation, like the love of the sport and the scientific aspect of and the love for people together have got me to that level. Yeah, I, I can feel your passion and your energy even through your content. But I'm scrolling through your page and the big thing is like when you're in the corner with your fights, uh, with your... Uh, fighters and you're just giving them that motivation and it's like do you want to have regret tomorrow and all that kind of stuff like your energy is just like comes through the screen and i think that's why you are so successful because you build that strong connection with your fighters and in a way well they're, they're your family correct they are they have everything for me and you know you bring such a that's why like for me it's very important to not be to not see only the sport towards the eyes of people who are in the sport. For example, you like fighting, but it's not like your things, right? Mm. And I love uh, to talk to you and other people who are not, uh, nothing to do with the sport because they help me to see what what people who are outside of this, uh, uh, I can say, f fighting clan, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's uh, what, because those people, are people who I want to help too. It's not only the fighters. And you bring a huge uh, piece of, of of what I'm doing. Now you spoke about the corner, no? And that's very interesting things. I, I don't think anyone explained it before that. So when you're in the corner, right? You can have a guy who's doing something extreme, very stressful. It's like life and that situation. And uh, most of the 80% of the time, you need to give someone technical advice so your jab is landing your kick is landing but you're gonna find situation when all the technique is gonna go out of the window maybe your guys is winning your guys losing two rounds he's done two he have only one round if you give him technical advice uh, you're not gonna help him to find a way to win the fight so you have two ways to corner you know most of the time you should corner always on a technical level but at some point, uh, the best uh, things you can do is on the emotional level. So you need to move something inside him to to open other gates, you know? 
like uh, your dad is watching your fight your dad is here is 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 here supporting you uh, tomorrow you're gonna watch this fight and you will say i could have done more that's why I, that that speech you got like is like you want to regret tomorrow no because uh, sometimes we don't understand the importance of the present to be happy the day after or tomorrow, you know? So we are in the present and what we're thinking, like the stress, uh, the judges, the, the the opponent, and you're not in the present and fighting, the key of fighting, it's to have the ability to be in the present. Like probably everything in life, even in your game, you know, when you go to do a rugby game, if you're thinking about the, these things or what's gonna happen if you do that, you're not in the present and you're losing the moments. And moments are making the victory when you win those moments. So I always tell my guys is two way to get someone to win the fight. You can corner on a technical level, which is what you have to do most of the time. And on special situation, you have to corner on the emotional level you have to move something emotionally and uh, only if you have that knowledge of people you can do that mm. and and i saw people i've done it hundreds of time people who they're losing that's it it's finished it's over and you bring back some people think like you know like a car you have six gears and you can see this guy who was broken he's losing like life and he opened six gear seven and you think eight nine ten and you understand how incredible human are yeah you, you, know? you see it in sport all the time whether that be team sport individual sport and it's getting towards the end of the fight or the game and they may be down yes technical is important but they've been training for that stuff yeah sometimes most of the times you need to create that emotional response for them to dig deeper and to add that extra gear because without that, they're not going to go to that next level. And through yourself tapping into that emotional response, and you see it in other sports, fighters or teams just turn around, they come out and like they're totally different because they've gone to that new level and they come out the other side and then they win and people are like, how did they turn it around so quick? It's crazy. It's because you've tapped into that emotional side of things. Yes. And they just have to focus because all the technical stuff is going to come naturally because they've yes. been training for that their whole yes. life. That's, that's the natural thing for yeah. them to tap in mentally and they get in the zone. Man, that's, that's where the game is. That's where you have to, uh, that's where, where a coach is a big part, you know, so even in a, in a sports team, like you were sp speaking about a very good uh, rugby coach yep. who is well known, not only for, uh, for the technical and tactical aspect, but how good he is with the people and how well he knows his athletes, you know? And uh, that's that's what we are. Like at the end of the day, people see coaching fight or, or rugby uh, 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 coach or soccer coach. But first of all, first and most, we are educators. So we have to, like you choose a path which like you have to be selfless. You cannot be selfish. Like you cannot be a coach and be selfish like you have the coach is the most selfless person and he puts other before even himself and uh, that's a huge part of succeeding you know like um it's uh some sometimes uh, it's very hard to do that because uh, uh you 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 feel empty you give you give you give you give but my personal return is like that exchange when I see you coming from nothing I feed you with knowledge and I speak to my guys you can see on my video like you cannot be a fighter and you do drugs you go out party and all of that so if you do that you just go into different directions and you're not gonna succeed uh, in the sport so you have to choose one path keep that lineage and be strong on that path uh, have the ability to say no or some compromises and uh, you're going to understand uh, after where you're going, you know, you, can, you have to have a vision. You have to have a, a short-term goals and long-term goals because also after the, any sport, uh, you have the, the life after, you know, and uh, that's where also a lot of athletes in any disciplines, they, they're doing a big mistake. They, 
you you have to be all in in the sport but also you have to plan your life after the sport and that's what i want for my athletes for example i'm educating them not only on knowing where to land the jab or or this i'm educating in culture when they have a contract we have big contracts one championship ufc they sit down on the table i sit with them and say that's the contract what do you understand about this and they look at me nothing and so i say you know what you have to do now do like that's that's what's about succeeding in life you have to find a way to succeed so they get the contract and i tell them like you have two ways now you can pay a lawyer and uh, he can examine the contract or you can just sign it without knowing nothing and you might be uh, a slave for five years of your life and you don't even know so like what do you want to do so i'm, I'm making them understand priority because one day i want uh, for for my people and whoever like i'm having the journey of coaching them the blessing of coaching them to know they're able to look after themselves without me you know i want to leave them in the world uh, saying like they're able to sit down and like my coach didn't teach me only how to land a jab but he teach me how to be a man i'm sitting i'm reading i understand you know they need to understand especially in fighting they leave all of these things to other people like managers etc but they don't if you're a fighter and any any sports you don't you you know when they say your job is only to train that's a bullshit now your job is like you as a rugby player or a fighter or whenever you are all of this you need to understand the importance of those contracts that's why education is very important you cannot be a successful fighter or or athletes if you don't have education education is a is a big part a big complement component of you being successful it doesn't matter how many uh, um, points you score in a game or how many knockout you win if you're not able you can see great fighters have no knowledge of of those sides and fail completely in life and made all this million for nothing for other people so it's very important to understand all of this it's about being an athlete it's not only performing the game that's what everyone should do mm. you know yeah i definitely agree and it's also not getting your identity wrapped up in just being a fighter or just being a rugby league player and from my experience um from being rugby league up- upbringing there's so many players that do wrap their identity in that and they get an injury or their career just ends. Yeah. And they have they go through, through this identity crisis because they don't know who they are. Yeah. And what I love about what you're doing is, yes, you're training fighters to be the best fighters, but ultimately what you're doing is you're helping men be better men. Yes, that's, that's what's all about. Like fighting, like my knowledge as a coach it's my tool to help them to be better men and women. It's not reverse. I'm not uh, like uh, try to make them better men to be better fighters. That's that's messed up, you know. I'm using fighting and their passion, the love for the for the game, as a tool to make them better people. That's all what's about. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm very successful in what I'm doing. I achieved. I I could stop now. I have like offer all around the world come coach in Dubai they offer me an insane amount of money I say no because I will never compromise myself and I know it's people here who needs me and uh, they rely on me and their growth and I took responsibility so I'm not compromising myself for any money for any uh, I have brands asking me to promote and you never see that on my profile I could make thousand of dollars every week just promoting things because like that's not what i'm doing i'm i'm not selling my soul for for those things you know it's so much bigger of course you need to have financial support to do what you're doing you know it's been it will be um uh selfish to say different you know it will be like uh, not the right things but uh, also you need to learn to say no on the things which are not benefiting you and and what's helping you now it doesn't really relate it's going to help you in a few years you know i i i live uh, 
outside uh, those boxes. Like I don't let uh, these things compromise me. I'm the same guy, uh, the same kids, uh, happy uh, with the joy of life uh, when I was 10 years ago, uh, when I was 10, and I'm the same now. It's, it doesn't matter the success, the fame, or whatever. For me, it's uh, that's just for me another way to access to people and and those people to find me and uh, we exchange it because i'm learning so much from from them every day same as i'm a teacher i'm a student at the same time with them so when i see them going through some things and the way they think they teach me a lot constantly i learn from them every day and uh, also they remind me of a lot of things because sometimes you're caught on the mission so i have a mission now i'm, I'm gonna build the best team in the world and that's my mission and uh, i'm gonna leave a legacy behind which is not only related through the achievement on the on the sports level but in other things i want one day from my team to come the best coaches the best mentors and have sort of a lineage uh where that's where we started and that's how it goes and and there's going to be the history, you know, sort of like a, um, a tree, a family tree, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's uh, that's the reason why I'm doing this. It's not, uh, uh, the, the, at some point, the belts and all of this, they're not going to really define who you are, you know. But those things, they're going to stay. Someone is going to watch this and say, okay, that's my coach, you know, that's... Uh, um, uh, or, or they're gonna see that and gonna reach me out and maybe you know I had uh, one event in my life which uh, have uh, destroyed me you know I I think uh, you know you get some trauma in life which uh, you get stuck for for years and you don't really um, times go very slow but very fast at the same time you are stuck you know you don't understand what's going on I I lost a very important friend for me, like a very close friend of mine. And I want to remind him his name was Matt. No? Um, Matt was a, was a very good uh, friend, was coming from a very tough upbringing. And uh, uh, he, first of all, we was friends. And after he also joined my project, Martial Arts for Integration, and, and he was uh, fixing his life, you know. Met uh, uh, me and Matt. It's so funny. He was one year older than me. We met uh, uh, one day. We had like in Italy. We in summer. Everyone goes on this area, uh, which is a beach area. And uh, as I told you, like I was always training, so I never stay out late. I always uh, uh, go home, like because I, when you stay out late, only trouble waits for you. You know. And I was an athlete and I was competing and I always look to not be in those situations. And we are in this area, which Matt was from my city, my area. So usually uh, we never really, um, we knew each other. He was, a, he was a good street fighter, but not a fighter. And uh, we knew because we are from the same area, but we never like uh, uh, came close, no? So we are in completely different area. And I'm with my uh, ex-girlfriend at the time, walking back to go to the bus to go home. Like it was not late at night, it was probably 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. And I know I have training, so I just went for a walk there. And it's like uh, these pubs on the beach and it's like a lot of people drinking, partying. And uh, I know when the time goes up, it's time for me to leave. I don't want to be in those contests. When I'm walking back, Matt is having a massive fight. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's uh, three guys and he's himself uh, and he's fighting and uh, he's fighting pretty well but you know three versus one you're never gonna win or you are like Mike Tyson and they're like they don't know how to throw a punch so I saw him getting hit etc so I jumped him and uh, like uh, we, we, we won that fight let's say no but I didn't really know him personally so the funny things like I when I when I when you become a coach you you I was very especially because I was coaching very um, I was coaching kids from from very hard uh, life so I have to be extremely severe 
and uh, I was very, uh, you know, uh, structures in my training, etc. So he would bring always this story and say, you know, I met coach, and I'm like, don't tell them. Like, oh sh- no, and he's like, I was having this fight. He jumped in. He he choked his people out, <laughs> and it was so funny because I I want to remember him like this because when we had the fights and uh, uh, in the fights this guy lost the shoes no so we are running away because now they're coming there people and we 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 won we, we're running away he's running and he have like something in his hands and i'm looking like and he's having this pair of shoes I say, what are you doing with these shoes <laughs> i say i don't know they're not even my size but <laughs> This guy upset me. <laughs> now he's gonna walk home with that shoes. <laughs> so he was telling everyone this story every time. Said, so, you know, I met coach. Like I was having a fight. He jumped in and like he finished those guys. And uh, as I told you, like I had like this moment. So he was joined my project, and I had uh, never shared this story before. I had these three guys competing in Milan. Milan is like four hours from where I'm from. And uh, we was driving at the night, uh, so it was like 5 a.m. And we have to arrive at Milan, at Milan probably on 6, 7, having the weight in, is amateur fight, and, uh, and compete in the, in the evening. And I received a call, it was like four, 5 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and it's him you know, calling me. And I'm halfway, we are two hours, so four hours and a half, we, we already drove two hours. And uh, it's two hours and a half left. He calls me, say, Coach, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm with the boys. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot about it. Coach, uh, can you come back? And I'm like, uh, Matt, like, uh, I'm back tomorrow. I'm, uh, I-, I have like the mission, no? I'm, uh, that's the vision, the mission. And I'm like, I, I have to take them. Uh, but are you okay? Because he was very positive as a guy, always smiling, big smile, like beautiful smile. And uh, he was, um, no, I just, uh, c- can you come back? And I'm like, uh, Matt, I know I was, everyone knows me. I was, I will be, and I was always there for everyone. Always. My, my shoulder are very thick. You know, I, I, I was holding a lot of people always. This was my role. You don't choose to be a leader. People choose you. I never wanted to be a leader. And I, I didn't care if it was for me, I will be living in a mountain by myself. And, um, I said, listen, I'm coming back tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see you. Like uh, we go coffee. We literally live right next to each other, you know. And he's like, coach, I just want to tell you, um, you done a lot for me. I love you. And uh, and he was saying to me things with no sense. He was saying to me, be careful on your hands because I broke my hands. And uh, he had some injury on my hands, uh, on his hands. And uh, say, are you okay? Like, what, what's going on? Like, why are you saying that? And he's like, no, I just want to tell you, like, I, n- I never had a dad. Like, even if you're younger than me, you're like my dad. Say, I, I see you tomorrow. Like, and, and and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hang out. And I'm like, at that moment, I felt like, you know, instinct. Instinct is something very important for human and animal. You know, when you see those animal, they just born or like, you know, when you have a kid and it's born and and it's uh, 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 you give him something and he's tried to, to eat and it's insane, like how they know that, that's instinct, you know? And uh, I felt like my my whole energy, my soul, like was driving me back. I was felt like pulling back towards home, you know? And I'm like, no, like I have these three guys, they're cutting weight. We have to go there, you know, they put so much training, I have responsibility, I have duty towards them. I cannot go back. But all my soul, everything was pulling me back. And we went to the competition and uh, we made weight seven o'clock. And I, after straight away, I receive a call from a number I, I don't have on my phone. It's his mom calls me like, Renato, like uh, Matt have hanged himself. You know, and I'm like, all my world, all everything I was, everything I knew, I felt like it squished me on the ground, like the gravity was fifty times stronger. I felt like I could not move, and now I have like my guys fighting, and uh, I have to 
how, how I can hold this, you know, like you cannot hold this. I just, one of my best friends just is not here anymore, you know, and I have the mission still. So I hold on and I say to everyone, don't guys mention this. The three of them, they fight him for the national team spot. Very important fight for their career. They all three won that night. And after that, I told them. And uh, for me, uh, that was, I, you know, as I told you at the start, I think it's up in your life when you get stuck for a few years. And I, some, some, some dark things happen in, in my, in my head. Some things like, like I could not understand how someone I love so much and, and, and how I have betrayed him. You know, I could have gone back. I could have, I could have done something. You know, I blame myself a lot because after the call, five minutes late, later, he killed himself. And I'm like, if I maybe have told him like I'm coming back, if I maybe have done this, I've seen all the option and I've uh, destroyed myself psychologically because I choose this path to help people and now I failed, you know, I failed and that's where like my, um, my love uh, for the game was tested, you know, and I remember like uh, I was stuck and uh, I was doing everything because I had like the knowledge of what I was doing, but I was doing as an automatism, but I wasn't there. Like I was literally an empty, an empty vase with nothing in there. I was like gone. I was here, but I wasn't here. And that's where like uh, I experienced that and I understood. Uh, I went like some dark places in my mental health. I'm like, so people can take their life, you know? And I started like, I had like personal struggle when, especially when you have a lot of knowledge and you think a lot, that's not very good for mental health. But if you're a very smart person, you're gonna be a person who struggles a lot. They say, no, ignorance is a blessing. And uh, when you don't know things, you know, people live their life. I, I don't sleep at night, most of nights. I'm thinking, you know, I'm always, thinking what I can do better, how I cannot let this happen again, you know? I think always about about everything, you know, w w w these feelings we have now, even this conversation, you feel that feelings here, right? You feel that. W where all of these go after, you know? Like we we have this beauty of, of being alive and all, all, just being alive is a miracle. Like the odds for you to be yourself and me be myself is just a miracle already existing as a miracle now a lot of people rely to religion a lot of people through science is a different different paths you go through in your journey of life try to understand the meaning of life you know and the uh, universe even not the safe the gravity was slightly less or slightly more we won't even exist like just even scientifically it's crazy you know so I was stuck for years and uh, I remember uh, the funeral and I remember I was there but wasn't there. Like it, you don't, some losses, like you don't, takes you a lifetime to process. I'm always thinking about him. I always think about all my people and that's why I, I, I don't sleep much, you know, because I have to, I have to hold on on those things. I have to the they are the things who made me the man I'm now, no. And I remember at the funeral, um I organized everything to to help his family financially. It wasn't like very wealthy family. I I'm very established at the moment. I have a very successful gym. Now things are grow. We are not in the underground uh, um in an underground stadium. I'm having like a beautiful gym. Uh, I bought myself a house, you know, I'm like established and start from nothing, like not having, no one ever helped me anything. All self-made, all with my hands. And like I'm sitting there and I organize everything so his family doesn't have to think about that. But I'm like not there. And I remember I'm sitting in the cafe, we were always drinking 
a coffee me and him and uh, i'm sitting in the same table we are sitting and i'm thinking and i see all my team i had like three four hundred guys in italy and my team and i'm seeing them all lost no and i'm like i'm looking and i'm like if i if i now give up uh, all of them they're gonna lose uh, an opportunity to be better in life and i remember like i took my pain i swallowed swell it deep inside me and I stood up from the chair and I'm like because everyone was coming to talk to me and telling me what we're doing next what's going on and I'm like I don't know like I I cannot I cannot stand and I remember like when I'm looking I'm looking them so defeat so lost around and I'm looking all of them I'm looking his family and say like I cannot afford to be down I swallow all that pain and was so much pain and I stood up from the chair and I started calling everyone and I said we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we're going this we're gonna win that we're gonna do that start like and and when you swallow you you don't fix it you know it takes a lot of times to you you realize other other people's um other people well-being and and uh you know you don't realize you because you 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 are the leader it's not it's not it's not funny to be a leader it's a very big curse you know you i cannot go take my car go on the mountain today and enjoy seven ten days by myself if my guy win uh, i cannot enjoy his win because i have the mission i have the next guy if they lose i cannot be in pain how I want to be because I have to think about the next guy, you know, and it's very hard to be a leader. Isn't that's why like not many people well, in many fields can, can be sort of leaders because it's, um, it's a life where you sacrifice your own self for, for others. You know, that's why I told you, you have to be selfless. So it took me a long time to, um, to understand like wasn't my fault but I still think it was you know still to this day you yes. believe it's your fault it, I could have done something and uh, for the man who I am I always can do something you know like if if I say like you couldn't do nothing people always come up to me like he's he would have done it anyway I don't think so I don't think he will I think he I would have found a way I always have found a way and um, that's where, like, I went, uh, like, in a in very dark places mentally. And I say, um, I learn a lot about people even more. I learn about myself even more. I I understood, like, if after that, like, I can, I can stay on my feet. For me, it was already a win that years to be on my feet. I keep doing what I have to do. The pain doesn't go away. They say, uh, with time, things go better. Like, it doesn't, you know? You just have more pages on your book and you have more things you can go back and reread and and sort of adjust um, adjust your pain in a certain way which cannot damage you much and people around you. But if you care, you know, you have to deal with that. You have to deal and... That's my role, you know. I people people choose me for a reason, and I'm doing that in the best way I can. So I have less those regrets, you know. That's an extreme event, of course. It's not like like that always. But if as a people we are not there for each other, what are we living for? What what are we winning in life? What's what's the purpose of winning? A lot of guys, you know, they want to win. They want to be successful. Why you want to win? The purpose of winning is uh, to share those wins with the people who you love. You know, that's what's winning. Winning is not the money. It's not the fame. You don't win for for those reasons. You want, at the start, like you hear all these fighters, I want to win because I want to pay the mortgage of my mom's house or I want to buy them a house. That's why you're winning for. You're not winning for the money. Money is an access 
to be able to do those things. You, you when you win in life, when you achieve something great, you want to sit down with your with your family and say, "Hey, I did that," and that's your joy. Doesn't matter how big you are, you can be um, Elon Musk, you can be Zuckerberg, or whenever, whoever. That's where that's what is winning is sharing those moments with the people you love. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm learning because I've I've win a lot in life. Still, I think uh, I'm, I didn't do five, ten percent. I'm very hard on myself, but uh, I'm learning to enjoy those wins in life with the people I love. You know, because as I told you, you know, you have a daughter. I have a daughter, and I'm strong believer on like um, you. You talk to me about your father, and thank you for sharing that. And we all have. Uh, demons you know we all have like those demons which doesn't make you sleep good some nights and you feel like they're getting you sometimes you know so for our job as a man as a father and moms and whatever it's uh, to understand that if we don't defeat those demons in our lifetime we're gonna pass those demons to them and they have to deal with and you're gonna think about those demons like something physically I pass you, but towards your behavior, towards, uh, you know, if you are a person who is an alcoholic and and alcohol is ruining your life, that's one of your demons and and you are a very bad father, you're already effective, you're already passing these demons to your daughter. If you're a drug addict and you're choosing the drugs over like spending time with your son or with your daughter, you're choosing you feed in those demons. You don't feed in the the good um, part of your life, and those demons automatically are passing through through your family. You know, so it's our job. Doesn't matter how big they are, your demons. You need to understand that you have to look at them as a, as a fight. That's your biggest fight. You know, that's that's the fight like everyone had. So everyone is a fight. You know, you told me like you're not fighting, you're a lover. If you love you're going to fight for what you love. So you are a fighter also, you know? And uh, it doesn't matter. It's not always, it's n- never actually, the hardest fight is never physical. You know, it's never a punch. That's, that's doesn't hurt much. Once you learn to deal with pain, like those things are very small. You know, you, I saw people breaking their arm. I break my hands fighting. I broke my shoulder. These things you learn to deal with, but it's other pain in life which is so much, so much harder to deal with, and it's those demons which we need to work. We're using like these tools, social media. That's how we should use social media. That's how we should use other things to understand more this part of being humans. You know, it's very hard. Man, especially I deal with the alpha or the alpha males, so are not people who really speak much of their problem, you know. So maybe they're gonna watch this and they're gonna feel more comfortable to to say that and to ask for help, because same as my friend, you know, I could uh, I could do something, I could have done something, if I knew more, and uh, now I know. And I can recognize things like even during COVID, like I one guy messaged me during COVID say, coach, I'm struggling a lot. I'm not gonna name him. He knows who it is. He say like, I'm, I, I have like very bad thoughts. I, I'm thinking about, it's not like COVID himself, you know? It's like when people uh, stop, start thinking and have time to think, that's why passions are very important, you know. Passion and access to the best version of yourself. But when you just have time, it's not good because you use this time to self thoughts and and doesn't go in good ways. And he was struggling a lot. He he attempted suicide already before he told he spoke to me. That's you know, I went back on my book of life and I went to my friend and I recognized that 
I said, I'm not doing this again. So I drove to to his place and it was like five kilometer curfew. I drove there, I trained with him, we stayed together. And for like four, two weeks, he was every day with me. And uh, I didn't care of cupping fives or like life. Like it was like this quote, now say, they say, uh, if I give you 10 million, do you, you're gonna take it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's only one catch. You cannot wake up tomorrow. You're gonna still take it? No. So your day tomorrow and more value than 10 million, mm -hmm. you know? And that's how I think it is, you know? It's um, the blessing of living. A lot of people now, they work hard through life. Why you want to succeed in life? So you have the opportunity to live. So you want to make those money, you want to make that success, so you have the, the, the only things, money you can make it, you can lose it, etc. The only things you cannot give back is the time. So money should be an access for you to have more time so you can live. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how things should work. It's, uh, and a lot of guys, you know, we, we've been there. You are young and you want to achieve success and you are like, what what this uh, is gonna cost me? I will to sacrifice anything, even if I die twenty years late. Once you go closest, closest um, to an older age, you understand like you will pay any money to have one year more, one month more. So that's what people need to understand is like you have to find a way to bring your your life up, but you cannot compromise. You know, and, and 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 go back of like losing years for for what for a coin. It's a, it's important. It's an important balance to 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 have feed feed yourself with a passion and use uh, the success to respect your responsibility because. We need daily task. That's what's gonna help a lot of people who struggle mentally, you know, and maybe they watch this podcast. It's give yourself like daily task. Have have a dream. You have to have a a, a small dream, but what's even more important, you have to have a dream who is so big, that big which scares you. You know? That's a, that's a good dream to have. Mm. You have to have that dream which like scares you a lot and you're like, I'm never gonna achieve it. And I have done things which the odds for me to do it was mathematically close to zero. And I was able to bring those odds on my favor. So that's, mm -hmm. that's very important, you know? Man, thank you so much for, for sharing all that. And you spoke about demons and matt would have been going through his demons which is why what's what happened and i'm so sorry for the loss but if matt was right here right now or if there's a listener right now that's going through their demons because we all have our demons some people have the tools some people don't what would be your piece of advice to matt if he was sitting here or to someone listening so then they don't go down that path of unfortunately ending their life because the, the stats are we lose seven to eight men a day and yeah. I believe it can be preventable by having these conversations. So, man, thank you for coming on here and opening up and being vulnerable because that's the first step is to have these open conversations that makes the listener aware of, hey, I'm not the only one that goes through this because a lot of the time when someone's in a dark place, they think it's only them. The reality is we all have our demons. We all go through our dark times. But if we can come together and be like, it's not just me. These two guys are on a podcast talking about it. They've gone through their own troubles, but they've come out the other side. Well, that gives me hope. So what would be your advice to them? My advice is uh, the key is the passion. You know, and sometimes uh, the problem is like, it's 
how you can say that to someone who struggle when when you struggle you don't see the good right you 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 don't think about your passion when you struggle it's um it's very important uh the understanding of of your inner self you know it was like this exercise i i i develop you know through studying and and uh martial arts and philosophy and whenever i, I try to and identify the inside you know and uh one exercise i was always telling to my guys to do it you know just go in a room dark room sit on the bed try to meditate and just open your hands like you're on the bed open your hands your legs and start breathing and when you breathe start like looking inside your stomach and and see which animal do you have in you know i always told them this and now everyone you know, try to look cool and say i have a tiger i have a lion you know and uh, try to understand uh, um your demons you know can be you can convert that so it's all about perspective of how you see things you know we can fight things and we can identify them as something very negative you know but also those demons when you cannot sleep at night and you feel uncomfortable on your living makes you do great things also right so that exercise is like you try to understand what animal you have inside you know and doesn't have to be an animal existing you have to try to see it how you see it you know you have to envision it in and with those animal comes like qualities and comes also like negative things you know so you try to recognize that and and maybe try to use that animal not let the animal use you try to you know if you see a horse inside you try to ride that horse and you can be faster through was your journey but also have to be also control at the direction or he's just going to run on the opposite direction and you can not going through as your goal you're going the opposite you know building a relationship building with that animal with that demon yes and have you heard of someone called tim grover before he's, no he was the coach for michael jordan some of the high nba athletes he's really well renowned and he speaks about tapping into your dark side tapping into those demons and using them as a fuel source to yeah. go out there and achieve your goals yeah and we live in a world now where it's oh you've got to be all positive but that dark side a lot of the times is what's going to get you through that barrier to get to the other side it's not all bad it's how you use it and I, you posted something last night around around fear and it was the hero uses it, but the yes. coward runs away from it. Yes. And it's exactly like that dark side. You use the dark side or you can run away from it and play victim your whole life. Yeah, I, I, I love that quote. I, I think is one of my favorite. I always say to my guys, you know, the quote is like, what's the difference between a, a coward and a hero? You know, they're both scared. They're both scared to die. But uh, what the hero decide to do, it makes him a hero. And what the coward decide to not to do it makes him a coward. They're both the same people. They're both like um, experiencing fear. But what they do with the fear, which makes a hero a hero and a coward a coward. That's it, um, yeah. And uh, I think, uh, as you say, I like what you say now. In these days, everything is acceptable. No? We have to accept everything. And uh, when you accept everything, you're losing yourself. I think if they watch this podcast from the start, they're going to understand in my journey of life, I've been very true to myself. And I had all the reason to not. I have all the reason to compromise myself. And I struggle a lot on my identity. But I, I find like pieces, you know, in my life. I like to say that life is like, um, I don't know if it's the word in English, you know, a mosaic, mosaic, no. mosaic is, um, uh, in Italian, mosaic is like, uh, the, it's the small pieces, you know, and you put them and you build like, it's like a puzzle. Uh, okay. But uh, the the right word, maybe we're going to edit it. <laughs> I'm going to show you after. 
Uh, actually, l- let me check. Yeah. I want to. I want to say it properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mosaic tiles like this. Like you, all little tiles create yes, like the artwork. Yes, yes. Yeah, so okay. That, I know what you right. mean now. Like little, so little tile pieces. I, I, I like. Uh, that's how I see in life. You know, I see in life like we building our mosaic. You know, mm-hmm. and through experience we got these pieces. Now life is big. It imagine this table, no? And uh, a small piece of mosaic is there, like tiny, tiny mm-hmm. pieces, and that's the color you put in. You know, that's the life you start as a kid, and you build your mosaic. And now I met, I meet you today, right? And I give you some of my pieces and you give me some of your pieces. We exchange and I put them in my mosaic, yeah. you know? So how I seen that at the end of the life, we're building our mosaic and we put in those pieces, people, experience and thoughts, things we have seen, uh, places. We're putting all these pieces together, we're gonna sit down at the end and we watch our final artwork. You know, that's how I seen it. I feel it's very important sharing. You know, for any type of struggle, it's very important to share, but also step up, you know, step up and understand it's people who are, who really care about you. And whenever you make extreme decision, those people are paying. So if you really love them, you have to be selfless, you know, you cannot uh, make a decision, but it's very hard to explain that when someone is struggling. You know, it's very hard. I've been there. I never asked help to anyone, you know, in the past, but uh, I have uh, very good people um, who support me and help me in my journey. Even lately, I met some amazing people uh, I have like a very close friend. His name is James Ahmed, uh, and uh, a lot of people f- from the gym lately. I, you know, that's where I, where it's very important to always be a student. Lately, I have uh, a, a guy who I never had a chance to speak to him personally. Uh, he have a business, and I really like the things he was sharing, and. Uh, I always like, um, you know, he was posting these stories, uh, and I, and I'm big on social media. It's not like, uh, uh, is is not like uh, I'm, I'm always like focusing on fighting, and that's what I'm using social media for, not for other things, you know, for my job, as you as you notice. <laughs> and uh, he posts something, and I commented, and. Uh, I say to him, like, I really love, and he's like so much older than me, not so much older than me, so, but even five years, if five years of experience, and was insane, we we sit down on the beach, um, I told him, like, do you want to get a coffee? He said, yeah, of course, I would love to have a coffee with you, just from no, or nowhere. We sit down on the beach, we start talking about life, and it was insane how, like, I just felt that, I don't know if, uh, those things happen to you and you're like just follow your instinct I always say to my guys follow your instinct know your feelings which is two different things instinct is natural feelings it's something we, we it's just momentary you know if you follow your feelings you're gonna do mistakes if you follow your instinct it's a different things and we sit down have a coffee and he was telling me about his life huh? and just the day he helped me a lot, just from a last minute coffee on the beach with him and he he have a family and and he have a he have, he have a son and uh we was talking and and uh and for that conversation I'm more grateful than any they, they someone could have given me a Lamborghini that the day wasn't valuable like what we talk, you know? So that's it, like when you have a chance, if you feel, trust your instinct to talk to someone, do it, because we are like animals, same as we are here having this conversation, and uh, hope 
helps you in some way and definitely helped me in some way you know it's a uh, it's very important to to follow an instinct sometimes with all this technology we have and how busy we are in life we lose those primitive instincts which make us who we are like how when you feel something and and it's happening you know and you're like how is that possible what's the odds there's no odds it's just like as a humans and animals also you see in the animal world all the time the animal is born like a turtle on the beach the egg cracks and what the turtle does run to the ocean how is that possible that's instant that's something uh, genetically and spiritually we have in our inner self and uh, we are we need to listen to that sometimes with all this technology we don't do that we just almost it's almost like a pill you know we find an appeal for everything i think that's a big way to actually have your problem still with you it's uh, just take another pill you know you go now doctors you go say i'm struggling the prescribe you the depra- antidepressive <clears throat> which i will have never be the man i am if i had to take antidepressive and now it's even their science you have to take science i'm just saying in a situation where it's not extreme uh, i don't want to say on this podcast don't take antidepressive no, i think there's a time and place for it yes but a lot of the times it's very easily yeah. described. You know? Yeah. As soon as you go to the doctor, it's pills. Instead yeah. of like, hey, what have you gone through? Let's, Let's actually talk. get to the root cause of this. Are you training? What's your diet like? Are you getting enough sunlight? Like all these basic things yeah. that it's been proven that's going to yeah. help our mental health. Yet the first thing they do is prescribe pills. Yeah. And it was so interesting because one of my students, once he went to a doctor and he was struggling. He said, like, I don't want to go in dark places. I'm going to go to the doctor and tell him, like, I'm struggling. And this doctor was, like, classic uh, doctor who was very... That's why doctors, same as coaches, they have to have, like, the scientific sides, you know, how to do things, but they also have to have the human sides, you know. And it's, like, such a such an important job. Same as, like, I've been... You know, a police officer. You know, sometimes I'm like, everyone can be a police officer, and that's crazy. You know why? Because you literally gonna make decision of like changing someone's life. You know, and uh, how many times you see, um, like, you 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 literally in in how long you can become a cop? Like in probably a couple of years, mm-hmm. and you. You need to go through some huge. It should be like same as become a doctor because a doctor choose if someone live and die. Same times, most of the time, some cops in some situation they have to choose to do something, and I think it's not enough preparation for people for that. It's like a, such a important role when you have to have very good uh, uh, knowledge and 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 sometimes like also expected wrong people are doing the job when it's so nice i bring an example i was watching last day was um these things in italy happen like this guy cop a fine you know and he wrote a letter to the cop and said like look i'm completely broke and uh, i am i don't have money to pay the fine and uh, uh i'm sorry i parked there and whatever and the cop just paying the fine you know and like it takes such a little uh, to to be a, to do something good, you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like people don't do that yeah. because we are core in life. We have to produce. We have to do. We have to just take a pill. Keep going. Take mm-hmm. a pill. You know. I'll tell you another example. You mentioned about you know the policeman and stuff, but another example is anyone can be a father, but not anyone can be a dad. Yes. Meaning to turn up to actually be present in your child's yes. life, past, not passing down your demons, building a strong foundation. And for you, you mentioned, you know, your business, your your fighters, they're your family, but the most important thing is your daughter. Yes. How important is it to you to create a strong foundation for her? Like, uh, and I hope one day she watch all of this 
um my daughter is uh it's a piece of me it's uh it's something like i cannot explain how many hours i think about her and how you know you're a dad you understand like only only when you become a dad you can understand some things people who don't have kids they cannot understand that's it like you cannot talk to them and maybe can empathize but you, when when she was born and she cried i feel like i, I need to do something a whole new level of love eh? it's a whole new level of love is uh what, what what i i i my my daughter it's very unique soul it's very gentle it's very generous it's uh it's scary how good she is now because sometimes i feel i know how the world is out there and uh, when you're like this you're in danger because no one not everyone wants the best for you you know it's many things outside which are dangerous and that's what i'm trying to do as a father and a dad i'm trying to make sure she's prepared for the world out there and one thing i i own her it's uh, my happiness she's a big part of me being happy and that's why i'm working towards what i'm doing i don't see my work separated towards my life with her they're all together because my daughter i i i, I had uh, my my family my father i i i seen my father right but uh, my father was never happy and uh i don't want her to have that that's my lesson like my my lesson is everything i do i'm doing it in a way so she's going to turn around and see her father happy because i could have everything and be unhappy and not be present that's wouldn't be valuable for her I want her to turn around and that's my dad you know he's happy so what does happiness mean to you for me her safety it's uh because i cannot be I have to be honest and uh, as i told you it's so much danger out there that's why i have to protect her and uh, i i think uh, i want to i never had a chance to talk to my pa- parents much because i always have to be strong i always have to be tough i what i want to do with her i think if i ever have a son i i, I want still to have kids in the future uh is completely different way you 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 grow your son and your daughter my daughter um i want to give her the opportunity to sit down talk to me about everything i don't i i want to have the opportunity now she's still little but now slowly she start understand things she's very unique so very very pure very gentle you know and uh, i love that about her and also how <laughs> that was scares me so i want her to have the opportunity to sit down with me and know she have like her best friend i want to be her best friend i want to know if she needs something i'm the first person who she come and i'm gonna fix it and no matter how hard it is i'm there for her and if she needs me like if i need to bury some bodies i do it you know i if i need to put someone someone does something i do it it means no i i don't even have i don't feel any i uh, regrets to be honest you do anything for your kids anything anything and i will do anything for for just daily see her smile and that's why like i'm so invested now as he's saying like it's a very very strong journey the one i choose you know give so much and but all of this at the end of the day you know when you sit down at night and you say what's the purpose of life you know now if you bring it in a very elementary understanding it's to like if you go extremely scientifically it's to evolution your gene to progress in in the way of life you know and uh 
I think uh, once you become a dad, um, you don't anymore live for you, you live for them. And, uh, you know, it's it's so sad because you've seen, I saw one video which have like helped me see it, was like uh, these two parents on the bus on drugs and the kids was sitting, I don't know if you watch it, and the kids were sitting there talking to them and they're all like high, they cannot even stand straight and that's sad, you know, that's sad is like, um, if uh, you as a parent, you know, are working hard to give better life to, to, to your uh, kids, that's why going back to my book of life, I go back to my parents and I'm so grateful and blessed for them because they did everything they could to give me a better life. Now, when you're a kid and teenager and you're like, my parents are never here. Why my dad is not just with me here, you know? But now I do understand. You know, he wanted, he was down, down there and he wanted just to bring me a bit more up. And now I can see different perspective and I could have moved up, you know? And uh, so that's I want to say, not only for the the kids but f for the parents is if you're doing your best you know I don't know if you watched that video of that dad who you can see clearly is struggling and he comes back with his car at the, at the house and he said like look guys what I'm coming home every day and it was his daughter in the garage the garage open and he's crying and said like that's why I'm working so hard every day mm -hmm. so once you become a dad everything changed everything shifted like the priority is only one, you know, and uh, that's why I'm using my mission also, so I can give a better life for her. And uh, I think uh, my final goal is defeat those demons for her, you know, and uh, make sure she can start from a stable point, which I could not because I have to. I have to get to this stable point. And it's like all and other things those kids with stability can do. Then, you know, it was this example. Gets two brothers, two twins. No, they're the same. And they both experience negative things, the same things. But now one of the two twins, he become very strong, you know, and he, um, those negative things have, have, have make him stronger. But the other one, the the negative things have destroyed him so the reality is like and that statistic is no jokes about that whenever you experience negative things you're gonna have 90 percent bad repercussion it's very hard like the story of this guy from nothing he built himself up it that's not reality that's a very very hard things to do when someone does that, is a special person. And uh, that's why it's our job as a parent to bring that level of safety around there. Kids are like, um, it's like they're having this crystal ball inside them, you know? And they have to be protected, especially at the young age, you have to protect them. If um, this crystal is very precious, if he cracks, it's never gonna get fixed. You know, you build a mechanism around to to feel safe, but once these things crack, it's damaged. You know, that's why violence, abuse, and all of these things, like kids cannot experience that. They're not going to make them stronger. If uh, uh, someone gets raped at a young age, it's not going to oh, experience this. Now I can, in, you're damaged forever in that sphere, you know. You have to build the other things in your life too. So some things are, is not acceptable in life. And that's our job as a man. Like we have to stop with those things saying like, oh, you know, all this pr promiscuity of like identities, which like these days is almost embarrassed for you to say, I'm a man and I want to be a traditional man, which 
it it's you know be a gentleman open doors and like and and treat people uh in some way as a man does now is all compromised and uh, <clears throat> i think uh, that's how job as a man's like he's been able to protect people around us you know and make sure they're safe and everything uh, in life everyone have everyone can make mistake in life we all made mistake big mistakes and you can make big mistakes and you can redeem himself you you have to redeem himself you, you have to redeem yourself everyone in life can make mistakes but it's your duty as a man to fix it but now with some mistakes which are not acceptable you know when you damage kids or woman or like you do things which is that's not acceptable like it's no for me that's that's I'm scared about myself when you pass those lines is Ken Velasquez uh, I don't know if you seen that his daughter was abused by a guy a pedophile and he ended up in in jail because he almost killed the guy mm. you know without reason I don't want to I never will push violence as I told you I'm not a violent person at all but when you cross some lines uh, like it just have to be done yeah. it's no it's no other options you have to do it like you uh, you cannot sleep at night anyway so you're gonna lose your life anyway if someone does this to my daughter or or something even come close to that I I don't care you know and uh, that's what we need now we need people who uh, are able to make to to who they're strong on themselves now with social media etc you 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 don't you be people becomes like parents etc they don't even have find themselves and everything is so accessible you know one thing I want to say to the guys out there which is very important you know how I'm a guy so I can speak f for a man sides in both male female you you have um, good and bad you know what I mean you have people with value and things and you have people not and we have people who uh, they want uh, to um, to get better you know like things change in life you're not the same person you had 10 years ago five years ago or 20 years later but one thing I want to say especially for a guy from a guy one thing I learn in life especially if you find a good person a good girl who is like next to you a lot of guys uh, uh, yeah. both sex but I'm speaking as a guy from two guys like if you find a girl who is a good uh, girl uh, treat her like like a princess you know treat her like a queen treat her in the best way you can make it feel like how she deserves to be feel because the worst things we can do and you can see like guys they get attracted of a, of a girl acting in a certain way or being physically very attractive and things like that the point is all this is gonna go you know but when you find like a good girl who is uh, doing the best for you don't treat her poorly you know because you're gonna give this girl the wrong feedback if you are not in love just let it go treat her like like the best way you can if you find like the love is not there let it go in the best way you can but the worst things you can do is the damage a person you know for your own like fulfillment and once you damage that person she's gonna have the feedback of being good it's wrong and she's gonna change to protect herself so that's what I learned in life when you recognize people good people you have to protect them you have to protect them even from yourself you know you have to make sure sometimes you know you're feeling change you don't you, you might attract that and and slowly understand like that's not uh, uh, as a person I'm in love just uh, treat her the best you can and move on in life and, and make sure she have the right feedback and same things to girls to guys you know what I mean like but it's all like education things you know now through social media we're educated the girl with the tits out or the guy who 
shows up like an expensive car on social media, that's what you have to look for. That's exactly things which doesn't last. That's all exterior. All exterior, you know. But when you when you get on the in in, in inner side, that core essence of who someone exactly. is. That's what you need to connect with. That's what you know. It's beautiful we're talking about these things because I never had a chance like but you know when you like have a, a partner and uh, for example you know that for yourself the most beautiful things for a man is to have the opportunity to be vulnerable with someone especially in this society now we never can be vulnerable at all that's why as you say seven eight men kill themselves every day mm -hmm. you know it's a huge number which can 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 be you know done something about that and uh i think the most precious things for a man when he finds the right person is like he's able to take his armor you know after a long day and put a on the table and and uh, open himself through the with the person love when you find a guy who does this he really loves you you know what i mean that's another things because we don't like to be vulnerable we don't like to to uh, show that sides to anyone, you know, especially like quality man, other man's they can, like it's, it's, it's levels in everything. It doesn't matter how strong you are. Well, what I'm, you know, I coach fighters, the muscle or the skills you have, it doesn't matter. That doesn't define you. That's define one part of being a man. Every man should be in shape and should be, um, feeling good with his body and and you you, you don't want to to fight uh, in the street that's something I'm completely against but it's a saying it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war you know so every man should know to fight you don't need to fight there's no need in this society now you you, yeah. you fight you end up in trouble but you have that artillery there in case something goes down and you, you have that sore you know up. You know, and you have to, like, it's nothing when you see, like, an happened once in Italy, but it's a, a long story for another day, but we we'll say, like, when someone is, like, ap approaching your partner, like, and, and you might, you know, you might not be able to fight that guy, and you're not be able to protect yourself, so, but if you develop some skills, you can do that. At the end of the day, if you, if someone approach a group of people, approach your partner, and and you don't interfere, like you know, you're gonna feel like uh, less than a bug, and it's better to get beat up. So to all the guys out there, if someone does something wrong to your partner, you walk in the street and you don't do nothing about it. Uh, well, uh, you like you, you should be embarrassed about yourself. It doesn't matter win or lose. There, you can lose. You can get beat up, but you have to do it, you know. Standing That's, up for who you are and what you believe in. You have to. Like, it's the most precious things in the world, your partner. If uh, someone tried to compromise that and damage it, of course, like, in a, like if it's a comment or things like that, like, you cannot. Like, the, we, we, even on that, you see when a woman is a different type of woman, is like, she's not going to put you in those situations, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, if you have a... A pretty girl with you and and she's pretty is not aesthetic like and men understand that is not men now they can fall in love with a waitress or a girl with nothing because that we don't see woman as a as a access like uh, i'm talking about for myself i seen i don't care uh what she have or don't have but uh and that's what a lot of men get attracted to is not only the st the other sides, not not the statical part. It's the core you was talking, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it's very important to 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 protect that and prot protect these people because is nothing more beautiful for a man to if s some girl is valuable. What I want to say is, guy, they're gonna hit on her regardless. You, you cannot police. You cannot fight every guy who's going to try to hit on her. No. But it's nothing more attractive for a man when 
a woman looks uh, inaccessible to other men, you know, and she's yours. I gave you an example. Me and my close friend, we went for a, um, for a, uh, we went to a Brazilian barbecue, and my friend uh, uh, was uh, this waitress was he was very attracted to, and uh, he's like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to her uh, when we pay the bill. I want to know her name, you know. I just want to know. I say, of course, go for. Uh, and uh, we went uh, to pay the bill, and uh, he started talking to the girl and said, "What's your name?" And she was like, very friendly, very, very, very nice girl. And he's like, uh, "Where are you from?" Uh, from Brazil, of course, Brazilian barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Oh, where in Brazil?" And she say, uh, "I don't remember which city." Um, and he said, "I really want to go there." And you know what she say first? She say. The first moment she have a conversation, she say, "Yeah, I'm gonna take my boyfriend there soon," mm. and that's beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, a, a, a lot of like people won't understand that, but like she used the first conversation to make him understand that I'm not accessible. Let's put that boundary there. You know, and you know what I did? I left her thirty dollar tip just for that, because like it's not about this. Like you expect this. On a man's side too, you know. Mm. If a girl's approach you, which is less common for a guy than a girl, you know, is that's how worlds uh, the world works. But that's what's very attractive for a man. Like, and me and my friend was talking about after. Like, you cannot blame him to like he's a beautiful guy, very successful guy, to see some someone who who's interested and he liked it and he wanted to know more. She just put that boundary, and that's like held down you know yeah it's like beautiful and that's how on both sides should be you know should be this the beauty because you know you know what's the most important things we we is our like uh, our ultimatum goal in life is to to have kids that's that's when we finish our life our life starts you know that's where we came so far like now people don't want to kids and that's their their uh philosophy and that's thoughts but in the most if you go back on nature and you take away technology and things like that you understand like people that's that's the process of life you finish your life you another life is created you know and uh i think uh, um that's that's our end goal you know as a as a find the, that 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 person once you build life is like i'm thinking about two candles you know and when you find that person it's very lonely like one candle can light a part of the room but if you put two of them they make a huge light one next to each other you know and you want to find that person when slowly that candle is going to get shorter 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 in life and uh, you you're gonna feel on your last moments you you're going away fulfill of of that you know that's what's it's is now it's like this everything is accessible you can have like different person for a day of the week yeah. right next to you but what we lost is like the beauty of we have like that person in life which be with many girls no especially for a guys is like being with nobody but you can find that girl feels like you you have the universe in her and all the world, you know. So that's what you have to look for. So just a different message. Now you see, you know, you go on Instagram and it's like popping like uh, uh like girls like uh, like ads, you know what I mean? Like uh <laughs> it's it's crazy. And it feels like looks like I'm a marketplace <laughs> mm-hmm. for girls and guys. Like yeah. looks like when when we lost like the traditional way of like being with someone and enjoy company and and know someone now it's like you finish one relationship you're in another you're in another dating apps and all that kind yeah, of stuff. It's yeah crazy you know it's a it's a crazy world out there that's for sure yeah but yeah i think if you know who you are you stick to who you are you, yeah. and the energy you put out you're going to attract that same energy back to exactly you. i agree man we could speak for hours the a man of knowledge and wisdom and stories you have is incredible and i thank you so much for sharing that with me today 
I wanted to ask though, you mentioned, you know, the mosaic and you put those little pieces of the puzzle. When you get to the end of your life and you're looking back at that artwork, what do you feel like it's going to look like? I don't know what it's going to look like because I didn't put the pieces together because, you know, you can have a direction of colors, but now something up in your life and change. Mm. I cannot have that prediction. That's You cannot predict that. You haven't tomorrow, envisioned like a, tomorrow, a animal or anything that it's going to look no. like? No, but one thing uh, I know for sure, what I want to feel watching that mosaic is feel happy. Mm. That's the the important things the feelings not how it looks like the feelings which give me one I'm looking at man that's beautiful we have a closing tradition where the previous guest leaves a question for the next guest without knowing who it is so the question for you Renato is what is the main piece of advice would you give to your kids the main piece of advice is um when you when you feel something is right, don't give up. Find every single way possible for you to to get it done. Don't give up. Use your tools, your knowledge, and if you don't have it, find it, research it, and don't give up. Renato, thank you, man. This is yeah. It's been an amazing conversation to hear your journey from little boy in Italy to now over here, what you're doing with all the fighters and not so much on the tactical side, like that's important, but actually diving into the mindset and changing the game and building strong connections and relationships with your fighters and also your journey in itself, man. So thank you so much for sharing it. If anyone's interested in finding you or training with you, where can they find you? Uh, the easiest way probably on Instagram, so Coach Subotic. And uh, yeah, and uh, and if everyone needs, wants to have a chat, I try really, I have like a lot of people message me daily for training, but I really try uh, to reply to everyone. And, and that's a big part of being an educator. It's like being there for the people, you know? So yeah, just there is probably easier. Brother, thank you so much. Lovely to meet you, brother. Thank you for, for this.